Currently, the weather in the UK is not perfect. It can be sunny for a day and then rain for a whole week. But never mind, we're here for great fantasy books to read in this summer. Hi guys, I'm Dan. Welcome back to my channel. Today, all the books that I'm going to talk about are all fantasies. But I hope that I can bring different subgenres and a little bit more of diversity other than just epic fantasy series. Without further ado, let's dive into the books that I'm going to recommend you. First of all, let's start with the shortest one. I put this one on top of this recommendation because I want all of you to jump into this rabbit hole with me. And it is The Fall by Ryan Cahill, the first novella of the Bound and the Broken series. This book is short and floppy and I think it is perfect for a quick read in summer. And I also see it as a good way to see whether you like this series or not because I mean it is such a long epic fantasy. Currently, I think we have three novellas and three novels, and they're long. This novella actually takes place 400 years before the main plot. Every 400 years, the field between the gods and the mortals are the thinnest, also known as the blood moon. One of the Dralas, Altua. Dralas is a term for those who are bound to the dragons, betray his people and align himself with the traitors. In this book, we're gonna see other dwellers and knights of Acheron to try to defend this city and to stop this political scheme. Although this book is short, it is full of actions. Other than dragons, you will see other mythical creatures you will see in the fantasy world. Personally, I really love this intense novella and it is such a good way to see whether you will like this world or not. One thing to note is that if you want to get into this series, make sure you check out all the novellas because they are so closely related to the world building. So don't miss this one. After such a short novella, here comes probably the longest one on this list and it is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Let me put this one down first because it is really heavy for me to hold. It is 800 page long. Even though we have the prequel, A Day of Fallen Night, I will still see this book as a standalone. These two books are set in the same world, but the plot, the characters got no major continuity in it. This massive book, in short, is about the West and the East, where they got such a massive difference in terms of their cultures, beliefs, need to defend against the nameless one, a dragon who would destroy the world. In this book, we're gonna follow five POVs. In the West, we have Queen Sabrine. Her bloodline requires her to produce an heir to protect this kingdom. And then we have Ed, who is an undercover in the court, and she is actually a mage. She was sent by the Priory of the Orange Tree and to protect the queen. We also have Loth, who is a long-term friend with Sabrine, but he got exiled because of the rumors about his close relationship with the queen. In the east, we have Tain, who has been trained to be a dragon rider. Last but not least, an exiled alchemist called Nicholas. I think this book is great in terms of the world building. In just a standalone, we have a world divided by the east and the west, and they have such a distinctive culture and beliefs. It is quite heavy with politics and enough romance elements for my taste. I would say it is a perfect book if you got a long weekend off and you don't want to finish a fantasy series but a standalone. So now you may think on this list we have two epic fantasies already. Do I have anything different? The answer is yes. Although this book on Goodreads is labeled as epic fantasy, it got a twist on it. It is heavy with mystery and it is The Silver Blood Promise by James Logan, the first book of the last legacy series. This book begins with a murder and our main character, Lucan, discovered that his father is murdered and left a message for him. Lucan, Safrona, Sandrusa. To find out the truth about this murder, Lucan followed the clues left by his father and traveled to a city called Safrona, where everything has a cost. In this city, very luckily, Lucan meets a very funny but helpful street rat called Flea. Together, they will crack this code and find out what is Sandrusa. This message turns out to be much bigger and it is about a political scheme. Lucan would meet different characters in this city, whether they are friends or enemies. Lucan has to figure out who to trust. This journey is such a fun ride that is full of dangers. It is very exciting and got an uncharted vibe to it to explore this city with Lucan. There is a magic system in this world but it is not complicated. It is more like a tool assisting our main characters along the way rather than like the one in Mistborn. I really enjoyed this new release and I hope you would like it as well. 
Speaking of murder mystery, I also have another recommendation that is set on a cruise which I think some of you may do in this summer and it is Voyage of the Dam by Francis White. In this world Concordia, there are 12 provinces. To celebrate the peace between them, the heirs from these provinces embark a 12-day voyage. Each heir got a secret magic power known as the Blessing, but the main character Ganymus, also known as the Fish Blight, because as an heir, he got no special power at all. No one on this ship gonna expect there's gonna be a series of murder. Our main character Fish gonna play the detective. On one side, he wanna find out who is the murderer, but he also need to keep his secret safe. This journey on the sea is so intense. Don't forget every heir got the blessing and they won't tell you what it is so easily. Behind all these murders, there are something more about the politics in this world, I also love the fact that every heir in this book got their own past and there are something they want to achieve. Fish this main character is fun with such a British sense of humor. With this investigation going on, Fish also has to confront his past, his fear. There are enough romantic elements for me in this book, so if you're looking for a murder mystery that is set in a fantasy world, you may want to check this book out. So now we are back to epic fantasy and it is about Brandon Sanderson. I know it is quite unlikely now, but as in 2024, if people want to get into the Cosmere, which book would I recommend? I think now people will either go for the first or the third book of his secret project last year, but I have another choice and it is Warbreaker. I think it is the third series I read by Brandon Sanderson. At first, I start with the Final Empire and then jump into the Stormlight Archive. But I think Warbreaker, this standalone at this moment, yes, I know about the ending and the possible sequels, but where is it now? So I would still say it is a standalone at this moment. I think it can still capture the Brandon Sanderson's sense of humor, intricate magic system and world building, and also unexpected turns. This book starts with a pair of sisters called Siri and Vivana. One of these princesses have to marry this god king, Life Song. This god king seems to be a very dangerous person, so Siri replaces her sister and marry him. This action triggers a series of intrigue and dangers. Vivana of course loves her sister and don't want to put her in such a difficult position, so she decided to rescue her. As for Siri, she discovered there are something more about Light Song. Through the interactions, we know that there are more mysteries in the city of Haladrin. The magic system in this world in short is known as the breath. Someone can accumulate the breath and reach different levels of power. You can also use this breath to awaken objects, temporarily bring them to life. This book, like I said, is so fun and typical with Brandon Sanderson's intricate magic system and world building. This is also a great start to the Cosmere and perfect for a quick fun read in summer. At last, I have something really different. It is an urban contemporary fantasy that I didn't expect I would love, and it is The Book of Doors by Gareth Brown. Like the title of this book, it is about book with magics. Our main character, Casey, one day received a magic book from a loyal customer. This book can allow her to open a door to anywhere in this world without the constraint of time and space. But it is not the only magical book in this world. There are other dangerous individuals who want to collect all these books for their own purpose. Luckily, Casey meets Mr. Fox, the one who want to keep all these books in a safe place. Together with Casey's best friend, Izzy, they will try to protect all these magical books. One thing I didn't know is that this book is full of time traveling. With Casey's book, you can literally be anywhere, anytime in this world. But when I read it, I didn't feel lost in this time stream or feel overwhelmed by it. I also think that all of the details in this book is fully clearly explained. There are definitely a cause for the outcome now which I think is clever. How Casey gonna come up with this book of doors and why certain characters are so evil? All of the questions you may have while you're reading will get an answer later in the book. If you want to read fantasy but you want something different or you enjoy book with magic, I think this book is for you. So here are all the books I recommend you guys to check out in this summer. In terms of subgenres, they are just not epic fantasy but with mystery or urban fantasy. 
And there are some books that are supporting different sexualities, which I think is great. I hope you guys will enjoy my recommendation. So if you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a like. If you don't want to miss any content from me, make sure you have subscribed to my channel. I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.